Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk back again with you guys for another show for another episode of our Raw Reaction series, specifically the Arsenal Transfer Show. We are closing in on episode 150, not quite there yet. 147 is where we're currently at. It's been a lot of shows that we've been doing these. Thank you so much for joining me as always as part of this journey. Do drop a like in the chat box. Do uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Good morning to everybody in the chat. Apologies for the slight lateness of the show. Uh, you may have seen David Ornstein dropped a transfer update on The Athletic this morning, uh, which included quite a little, uh, a nice bit of information that I definitely want to include in today's show. So I needed to just tweak the thumbnail and the title very so quickly. Uh, so apologies if there's a slight lateness, but good morning. To everybody that's joining us in the chat, we can see Jasho, Anukra, Anthony, Tully. We got Poria in the chat uh, from Bay Area, California. Lovely stuff. Oh, I can feel a TGT sneeze coming on. I, I wonder when that's going to hit. <laughs> Ed, uh, best part of a sleeping disorder, TGT at 3 a.m. Ed, what are you doing, son? What are you doing, Tono? Uh, uh, we've got Adian in the chat. We've got uh, Pepper. We've got Terry. Uh, so many of you. Thank you so much, as always. And Poria as well. A massive thank you for helping us out on the channel and joining up as a member. You've joined an amazing crew of people, members, community. Welcome, Poria, to the chat box. What an absolute legend. He or she is, uh, to be fair. Uh, let's uh, let's move on and uh, talk about the Arsenal transfer news. Of course, we kick off by telling you, as always, to go over and subscribe to the Arsenal way. Uh, there is going to be a 9.30 a.m. show, uh, which you'll be able to tune in for. I, I, will there be a 9.30? There may not be. Now, do check the channel uh, because I'm not on shift today. Um, but uh, And there's a lot of stuff going on this morning. So there may be, there may not be... Uh, I hope so, but uh, I can't promise you. I'm not in control. <laughs> there may be a show this morning, but do subscribe. Do go check out my chat with Jeremy Smith over there about Jonathan David as well. Really good conversation with him. So make sure you do check that one out. However, we move on to our next and key part. If you have not yet already done so, go and watch my tactical breakdown of Bruno Gimaraes. It was a really, really interesting uh, look into the player and kind of really taught me even more about him, understanding how good he really is. Um, <laughs> amazing to see so many positive statistics. So much so that I noticed in the comments section of the video, some people thought I'd skewed the stats. <laughs> some people thought I'd only looked at the stats that made him look good. If you go back and watch any of the midfielders that we've covered on the Tactical Breakdown show, I use the same statistics every single time. And not only that, but I actually added one new statistic, which is pressures, because I know a lot of people like to talk about pressures and pressing and stuff like that. So we actually added another statistic. So those that thought I was making, <laughs> skewing the results of Bruno Giralaish's stats, I wasn't. We use the same stats with midfielders every time. I just added pressures this time around. That was the only difference. But uh, it's amazing how precious people are about their favourite players and, you know, when other players beat them in certain statistics. It's really hard to admit that. I saw some people actually turn around in the chat box and the comment section and say that the show had made them change their minds about Bruno Gimaraes in a really positive way. So do go give that a watch if you haven't done so already. Um, now we move on to the main news. Now the first story that dropped yesterday was that Jordan Osse Tutu uh, arrived back at Arsenal after cutting his loan with Nottingham Forest, who of course we play on Sunday. He cut that loan short. He suffered a ligament injury uh, just before Christmas, I believe, and is due to return back to continue that rehab. It's annoying because he is a talented right back and he's actually someone that could have, uh, I think, developed into a very solid player, already playing in the championship on loan. But injuries have really hampered him at the start of his career. Hopefully, it's not having too much of a problem on his development going through. But it's frustrating that he's had to deal with so many injuries during his young career. But Jordan Osei Tutu returns to Arsenal after cutting his loan short with Nottingham Forest to recover from his injury and hopefully can get back into that youth team and get back his career on track. That's what we want to see from the player because he's very talented. Another player who's talented but things aren't going so well is Jonathan, uh, Jonathan, is Tyrese John Jules, uh, the striker playing currently for Blackpool on loan from Arsenal. Again, loan isn't going too well. My expectation with John Jules is that he's probably going to leave Arsenal in the summer on a permanent deal somewhere because it's just not working out with Arsenal. When you consider Balogun and how he's kind of risen through the ranks and Ketia to he was never really rated higher than those two, uh, especially in recent times at least. And it's probably expected now that his loan will be cut short. He might then reintegrate with the youth side and join Moller in the youth team with Mika Biereth. Mika Biereth could then earn a loan move out. He's been always thought of in the youth side as someone with good a good future and high potential since signing from Fulham in the summer. Um, 
John Jules, I think, is going to be someone that probably ends up leaving Arsenal in the near future, which is a shame because he had a lot of talent coming through. It's just not necessarily worked out for him and it hasn't at Blackpool this season. Maybe a different club would do better. We'll have to wait and see in the second half of the season. Charlie Patino, however, and Salah Adin and Amari Hutchinson all training with the first team squad ahead of the game against Forest. Chris Wheatley and Kai Karnak wrote the story, my colleagues over at Football.London, that uh, both players will be looking uh, and possibly to get a start or even involvement or a, a opportunity from the bench against Nottingham Forest on Sunday. Because of the situation, Granite Xhaka wasn't in training or wasn't at least pictured in training. Uh, Patino, Salah and Amari Hutchinson were and could be involved in the squad to travel up to Forest. I have a couple of reservations. I do think it's important that we keep minutes in our senior players legs i know that we all want to see these young players and these young stars get and go and get minutes i'm fine with that but we do need to consider that we've not played football in over a week we've got two really important fixtures coming up i'm not sure we can afford to leave all of the starting 11 without any minutes for over you know nearly 10 days up until the liverpool game next thursday so that really needs to be taken into account but you know it'd be great to see them maybe come off the bench or even if just touch charlie patino starts it's a great opportunity, but we do need to be careful of the balance, the amount of minutes that we're given to these players ahead of some really crucial games next week. Uh, now, Tarek Lamptey, uh, Graham Potter has uh, been speaking about Tarek Lamptey. And uh, interestingly, uh, he's not that keen, unsurprisingly, to see uh, him leave. He's expecting that all the players are going to stay. He says, no, I would expect all our players to be with us. There is a lot of speculation out there. There is nothing to report. The fact there is speculation shows we are doing quite well. He's played down the talk of Tarek Lamptey leaving, which is not surprising in any sense of the word because he's a player that we know is very valuable to Brighton. Spurs, however, are a team that are said to have joined the race to sign him. And that's, you know, that's unsurprising considering the fact that Emerson has just not done the business for them. But according to Duncan Castles and the Transfer Window podcast, he said that Arsenal are exploring the possibility of signing Lamptey, but Graham Potter playing down all the possible routes through there that uh, Lamptey will be leaving the club in January, which, to be honest, isn't much of a surprise. Our penultimate story of the day revolves around Bruno Guimaraes. Uh, already talked about him briefly this morning because we did a tactical breakdown on him yesterday. Um, Chris Wheatley reporting yesterday on Football London that Kia Jarabjin will likely be an intermediary in any possible talks that take place between Gibraltar and an English club. Three English clubs are said to be interested in him, Arsenal, Everton and Newcastle. There is an interest from Arsenal around the £38 million figure. That's what Leon would be likely looking for. But also concerning is PSG are interested in not Gibraltar but Lucas Paqueta who Leon rate at around 60 million euros. If PSG end up buying Paqueta for 60 million euros, it would certainly relieve a lot of the financial pressure on Leon, and they may not be as keen on selling Gimaraes for as low of a fee as they currently are supposedly open to. I think that only increases the incentive of Arsenal to try and go and sign him. I think we need to try and move quickly for that. We'll have to wait and see if it happens. But Kia Jarabchin is said to be the intermediary, very infamous agent that's been previously involved in deals for likes for the likes of Willian, the likes of David Luiz, so and Cedric, of course, too. I know that will come as a little bit of a pain for people because they're not the biggest fans of him and some of the kind of deals that he's done. I'm not letting that put me off Bruno Gimaraes in any way. I focus on the player. I focus on what he's going to be giving us. Kia isn't his agent, by the way. He would just be an intermediary in the deal and trying to get it through, similar to how uh, Georges Mendes was an intermediary for the Nicolas Pepe deal, that kind of thing. Um, lastly, and a story that I wasn't talking about this morning, however, David Ornstein changed all that with dropping a uh, transfer update just before 8 o'clock, had to drastically change the thumbnail, drastically change the title, and added Vlaovic to our story today. The Serbian striker is said now, Arsenal was said anyway, to be in the lead to sign the Serbian striker. That is a direct quote straight from David Ornstein's article on The Athletic. Um, it is said uh, that is not. Uh, this is why Arsenal are trying to sign Vlahovic. Uh, this is not to say a deal will be done, but they are pushing. And my information is that if the 21-year-old is to move in January, then as things stand, Arsenal are in the strongest position to sign him. That is because they are thought to be best placed of Vlahovic's current suitors when it comes to both the fee and salary. They could also explore turning Lucas Torreira's loan with the Italians into a permanent transfer as any part of the agreement. Given Vlaovic's contract expires in June 2023 and he won't renew, it suits Fiorentina to cash in sooner rather than later. 
that basically puts the player and his representatives in control of matters and it is unclear if they will opt to move now or stay for the time being there's some more information about that but obviously go over to the athletic and read more about it but the fact that arsenal are said now to be leading the race for Dusan Vlaovic and the fact that David Ormstein is confirming reports that I said previously when Ben Jacobs of CBS Sports reported that story and confirmed the news that came out of Gazetta della Sport. I sat here and I said that I have absolute faith that Ben Jacobs was confirming this as I reported yesterday and that I had faith that Ben was right and now you're seeing the information drop from The Athletic now as well. Uh, because, yeah, as I say, I, I, I trust Ben's information. I trust his contacts. I trust what he knows. And uh, it turns out I was right too, because this is looking very, very interesting. Um, Scott says, leading means he ain't coming. <laughs> what lead means? I mean, yeah, Temi says, I hate all this appetite wetting stories. What does in the lead? Basically, what they're saying is that of all of the options, all of the clubs, everyone that's kind of putting offers and proposals forward, Arsenal's is the best. Arsenal's is the most attractive in terms of wage, in terms of the offer to the club as well. Arsenal are in the lead. So, you know, if that's kind of how you want to look at it, look at it that way. Uh, FK Latte Firm did a video on Vlaovic yesterday. I would encourage you to check it out. It's a very good breakdown of the player. Uh, we did a breakdown, of course, of Vlaovic in the summer. I might do another one in a few weeks' time, obviously, if things step up some more. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't want to leave quite a bit of a gap between myself and FK doing our own breakdowns on that. But uh, you know, go check out his his discussion about that because it was very very good. And uh, yeah, leading us on says James T. That's what lead means. So there you go. Jason says late to the show because my notifications didn't notify me again. I have no control over that, Jason. I'm really sorry about that. That's all on YouTube. Anyway, that is the last story that we're going to be covering, which does mean we move to the chat box to go through as many of your questions as feasibly possible so if you do indeed have a chat box about that let's get into the chat and we'll go through them okay let's jump into the chat and see what you're saying Evmi says does that mean Vlaovic wants to come here now previously a lot of us have been including myself very reluctant to kind of jump on the Vlaovic train because of the reluctancy supposedly around the player. Now, what's interesting about David Ormstein's report here is that it says uh, Arsenal are in the strongest position to sign him. That is because they are thought to be best placed of Vlaovic's current suitors when it comes to both fee and then the important word, salary. Now, salary is obviously only to do with the player. So that's an important bit of information that's previously not been mentioned by any other report that I've seen it's always been about the fee, always been about Lucas Torreira's involvement. No one's ever mentioned salary. David Ornstein is the first I've seen to mention that Arsenal are best placed regarding offers of his salary. That gives me some optimism um, that that is, you know, a really positive move and that it would be an attractive contract offer to Vlaovic. We would have to wait and see whether or not it turns into anything possible. But what I, what I would say is that clearly Arsenal are interested in the player. That's become so, so clear in the last few weeks. They clearly want to get a deal done this winter. They clearly want to strengthen the striking department in winter. And that's a really, really positive thing for Arsenal fans to be optimistic about. It gives us something to really latch onto and to you know, hope for this window rather than just pining over a striker that's never going to join in this January window. There's hope that a deal could be done. And that hope we are going to cling on to like wildfire. So uh, fingers crossed we can see some movement for Vlaovic this summer. Uh, Thunderman says, hey Tom, good morning, mate. Great show as always. Thanks, mate. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, Emily Nelson says, depending on how it goes for Ghana and Thomas Partey in the AFCON, when can we at the earliest see him come back? And how will quarantine work when he returns to the UK? Uh, I'm not sure if Cameroon, on what kind of list Cameroon is. UK red list. Let's just have a look. Uh, Cameroon travel advice is um, addition to information, the African nations which will be hosted in the Cameroon, updating information using taxis in Cameroon, foreign travel. I'm trying to look at this regarding returns. Doesn't say avoid traveling at night across. Uh, that's not good to do with this. Uh, African Cup of Nations will be hosted in Cameroon. Match will take place on this day. Basically, as far as I don't, as far as I know, anyway, the earliest that you can return is something around the twentieth of January. I don't know. Uh, I don't know about the um, kind of the latest. I think it's something like the third of Feb, and I don't know about quarantine. I'm trying to. 
coronavirus. Here we go. Uh, travel health advice, entry and borders, returning to the UK. Uh, check what you must do. If you plan to pass through another country, why can't they just make this really easy to understand? Why can't they just say, if you're returning from Cameroon, you will need to quarantine for this many days? Why is it so complicated? I mean, there are people that need to understand this information. I can't even understand it trying to read for someone else. It's ridiculous. Um, but apparently you guys in the chat box are saying it's not on the red list for the UK. So, you know, clearly you know. Uh, <laughs> Clearly, you know more than me because I can't understand anything I'm reading here about whether or not uh, you need to quarantine uh, about returning. It's, oh, for goodness sake, it's so annoying. Why can't they just put up information that tells me whether or not you need to quarantine or not? I just say, you don't need to quarantine. You do need to quarantine. It's ridiculous. Um, Red list was scrapped a couple of weeks ago. Thanks, Paul. Um, appreciate that. I know that there's still weird rules. It's so stupid. Um Oh, they just need to be more clear. Dirk says, do you think we need to do better with scouting? We always seem to be slightly late in finding high potential players like Vlaovic. Why can't we find more Martinelli's of this world earlier? Um, I think what you're seeing, Dirks, is actually an improvement of the scouting department. We've actually added a number of uh, scouts recently. Uh, Florian Blukel is going to be our new scout in Germany. Uh, Roman, I want to say Roman Poiré. Uh, I think he's going to be our French one. And Tony Lima is the guy who's coming to do the the Spanish one. We've also added an English domestic scout or, you know, UK scout as well. We are increasing our scouting department. So uh, that's something that's hopefully going to be improving. Um, <laughs> Chris says, a lawyer wrote it, Tom. It has to be unintelligible. You know, very, very true. Lassa says, would you take Vlaovic over Isaac and why? I, you know, pfft, the reason for my reluctance on Vlaovic was always kind of the reluctance of his party to get a deal done. He is clearly one of the most exciting talents on the continent right now. I don't think I I don't think I'd choose either way to be honest. I feel like I lean towards Isaac because there's no there's no reluctance being reported on their part. If there was if someone turned around to me and said that Vlaovic wants to join, it's just a situation where the clubs want need to agree a fee on the deal, I'd be a lot more open to the like Vlaovic joining and if we did that tier rating system that we did a few days ago, he probably would have been in very good nearing do it now. But the problem is he doesn't have that element to his profile yet that convinces me he's the right player for us to invest heavily in so i i i would be open to it i just wouldn't want to say what way i would go either side of uh, right now because it just seems so convoluted and confusing and blurry and vague with how it's being reported about vlaovic's intentions i just can't make a decision on it right now uh, Matt says, do you think uh, it'll be one of Bruno permanent or Jeannie Van Adam on loan? I still b would be surprised if we signed a central midfielder permanently in January. I'm desperate for us to sign Gimaraes. I've just been let down so many times in the past by January windows. I'm not getting my hopes up about it. Emmanuel Ojo says, will teams still be allowed to postpone games in April and May? And if they have an outbreak, or will it only work for clubs like Liverpool? <laughs> Look, we'll have to wait and see, Ojo. There's no point in me speculating what's going to happen in April and May because we just don't know. Uh, Aya says, uh, Tom, just out of curiosity, who do you prefer, Gimelash or Frankie de Jong? I think that Frankie de Jong would be a better option for us right now, but I really like Frankie de Jong and think he would be a great bit of a great signing, but he would cost a hell of a lot more than what Gimelash would cost. Uh, Jonathan says, January transfer window ends on the 31st, right? It does indeed. Um, Billy says Terry Flewers has said that Vlaovic never turned Arsenal down he's just assessing his options I mean there's been no reports that have said that Vlaovic has turned Arsenal down all the reports coming out are saying that his representatives are the ones that are being very kind of you know what's the word uh, resistant uh, to the kind of the talks no report has ever said that he as the individual is not keen on the move and that's why I think people are taking this too far at times the only issue is that i feel like you can't be 100 percent sure either way and so i'm just kind of leaving my options open for this one andy's hunter says who are your top three favorite musicians <laughs> andy taking the conversation at a completely different angle uh, very quickly answer this in alternative side of things foals in drum and bass sub focus and or I'm probably going to stick with drum and bass still and say either Friction or um, Dimension, although, you know, in the media, he's not going too well for Dimension at the moment. Uh, Polar and Bryson is another one. Culture Shock as well. Some really good ones there. But yeah, alternative side, Foles. That's why there's a, a vinyl over there with Foles on. 
and uh, maybe maybe Makoto as well. But anyway, getting back onto the football, because <laughs> I know people don't care that much about what I like music-wise. Cam says, why are we not looking at an all-round striker to increase uh, tactics and chasing players who either have a good goal-scoring record at inferior leagues or haven't got that and just moot his potential? Um I think the reason why we're not looking at an all... To be fair, you say that we're not looking at an all-round striker. Jonathan Davids is very good in lots of different departments and definitely I would describe as more all-round than more of the options we're looking at. Isaac is fast. He's decent in the air. He's, you know, he's energetic. He's a good clinical finisher, good on the ball, can hold players off. Dusan Vlaovic is a good clinical finisher. He needs to improve his game in the air. Link-up play needs to improve a bit more. But the, the reason why there's a bit of an asterisk next to Vlaovic is because in Fiorentina, he's kind of given free reign to do as he wants. And I do feel like if he was given greater instruction and if he was, you know, demand, if there was more demanded of him pressing-wise, link-up-wise, I think he would be even better than he is at Fiorentina. And I get that also from, you know, people I speak to who are big, big fans of, of the player and watch Fiorentina. And a friend of mine who writes for Fiorentina's website uh, who's been on this channel, Rich Hall, uh, is very, very much a, a fan of the player and says that in a different team, he would be even better than he is for Fiorentina because he's just kind of given a bit of free license there. So I do think that there is more to come from him, but there is a bit of an asterisk next to him. Uh, Watatao says, do you think uh, we are going to try and replace Abamyang now that Vlaovic and maybe replacing Laka when his contract ends this summer? Um, I think that we're going to probably try and get rid of Aubameyang this month. I mean, when he returns from the African Cup of Nations, which I don't expect Gabon to get all the way through, so they'll likely return around the 20th, 21st of Jan. Uh, I think that Aubameyang will be... I think they will look to move him on, is my expectation. Patrick says, do you think we can throw Awa in a Gimaraj deal? I hope not, because I'm not a really big fan of Awa, to be honest. <laughs> uh, Chelsea, Chelston Dave says, given the, the centre midfielder shortfall and Callum Chambers uh, get a go there in the FA Cup, I seem to remember him doing well at Fulham. He did. He won player of the season at Fulham playing defensive midfield. I mean, he's an option, but he is a very far down the list option for me. And actually, there are reports suggesting that Arsenal may even cash in on him because his contract runs out at the end of the season. Although we do have supposedly an option to increase it by another year. Dan says, Tom, why do you think Edu is not really exploring his native Brazil for their abundant talents? Whilst Edu worked for the Brazilian national side, there is a bit of a misconception that people think that Edu will be scouring Brazil. But I mean, whilst he worked for the Brazil national side, that was very much focused on, you know, his role with the national team, not scouting the lower leagues of Brazilian football. He wasn't involved in the Martinelli deal. That was all Francis Cajigal. And I think there was also someone else involved, another scout that goes under the radar. His name I've forgotten. I apologise. Um, but Francis Cajigal was, Cajigal was one of the main people involved in the Martinelli deal. So Edu wasn't really involved in that either. So I do think that what you're going to see is Edu focusing on more just being the club's technical director and getting deals over the line, more so than scouting to the far corners. We're going to have people in departments that are focused on that. That's not really going to be on Edu. Edu's kind of in charge of the overall direction and the communication of getting deals done with Richard Garlic. Uh, Zana says, think Vlaovic will be window shopped every couple of years to either earn a big money move or improve teams for fees for his agents. They seem shady. My opinion is my own. Uh, yeah, fair play for owning it. I mean... They want to get the best deal for Vlaovic. That's the obvious situation. They want to get as much money for themselves and for Vlaovic as they can. They want to get in the best, most lucrative moves as possible. And you wouldn't really expect any less from representatives of a, of a player, to be honest. So I understand what they're doing. Uh, it's obviously frustrating from an Arsenal point of view. I'm trying not to let it affect my view of Vlaovic, but unfortunately, I think I've failed because I definitely think that it has. And I think that was reflected in my tier list the other day. But we'll see. We will wait and see. Uh, Phone the man says, hey, Tom, any truth in Man City looking at Arteta? I mean, I've heard nothing personally, but it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all, uh, to be honest. And he says, over 700 people are watching and we're not at 200 likes yet. Hit the like button, people. Come on, show your support. We do the show every single day, uh, more than twice a day. And in fact, you got a little bit of a treat later on because I'll be joined by Clive from the Arsenal Vision podcast at 4 p.m. UK time today. We're going to be going through all of Arsenal's transfer targets, Vlaovic, Gimaraes, 
Ollie Watkins, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Alexander Rizat, Jonathan Davids, Renata Sanchez, you name it, we are going to be going through it live, 4 p.m. You can throw in names into the chat box that we're going to be discussing. And if there's one thing that me and Clive like doing, it's talking about transfer targets. So that should be a fun, fun show. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's go to Mickey, who says, uh, come on, Tom, let's set the supposed reluctance aside on a player to base, a ta- player to player basis and the influence on our game. Who would you choose between Vlaovic and Izak? Oh, I don't want to choose, Mickey. <laughs> I don't want to set my stall out on either player over one. I don't know. There's always kind of this innate thing about football fans that we have to be on a side of the fence. We have to choose this player or that player. You have to be Arteta in, Arteta out. You have to have your stool set on one side. I'm sorry, but that's just not the way the world has to work. And I'm not going to sit here and be like, I want this player or this player. I would be happy if we signed either player and want to back them to succeed. And I'm going to sit very much on my fence because I've got a, I've rented an apartment clearly on this fence and I like it and I'm comfortable and I'm staying there. And there's nothing you can do to change your mind. <laughs> so uh, that's where we're going to sit. Um, Princess, do you think we can get both Izak and Vlaovic? I'd be very, very surprised. We don't play a two-striker system. We've got Balogun coming through. Lacazette's here for another six months. I think we would probably sign another young striker, not a not two marquee strikers, if you know what I mean. Uh, Cass says, still would like Calvert Lewin as he has a Premier League experience. And with Vlaovic, he may need time to adjust to the league and could end up like Pepe as he would be a high-profile sign. I mean, there's a risk associated with any signing. So we can say that for all signings. They might end up like Pepe. It could happen to anyone. Boo, pick a side, says Matt. No, not a chance. Not a chance. And Ainsley, yes, I will watch for splinters, but uh, I've been sitting here for so long. I've kind of worn the fence down at this point. So it's pretty darn smooth. Uh, Mogos says, I don't think we are capable of doing business this January for strikers. Davids is the most realistic as his team is doing quite bad. Others I can't really see. I mean, I don't think you should just reflect how the team's doing. Arsenal have got the capabilities of putting big money down, of spending a lot of money this window if they want to. Hopefully they can get some deals done. And as I say, Tom, do you think... I think so I've answered like 10 of your questions, Andy. There's going to be some people very jealous in the chat box. You keep getting lucky and popping up on my screen at the right time. Uh, do you think we'll get... Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> and that's why I don't answer questions. Uh, Vishal says, Tom, what do you think of Maxwell Corne from Burnley? I think he's at the right level. Uh, I think he's gone from, you know, I do think he's gone from uh, Leon to Burnley. And I think that's where he's going to flourish. I wouldn't be looking to bring him in personally. Finn says, bruh, of course, uh, Haaland uh, would be the best fit. He's the best player. Of course, well, Yeah, of course. Like he's, he's the best striker on the planet for my money besides Lewandowski. Uh, yes, he says, Tom, would you take D- Donny van der Beek as a squad depth player? I mean, does Donny van der Beek really want to move from one squad depth player position to another club to be a squad depth player? I'm not sure that he does. I'd take him. I think he's an interesting player, but I'd want to start him. I'd want to use him. Um, Thomas Reese says, Tom, please create some Haaland to Arsenal articles so that we can at least get the idea of it happening. No, uh, there's no reason for me to write about Haaland uh, and Arsenal. Um, the only reason why I would is maybe because he's linked or we see like a genuine... The re- the, any article that I write, I look at trying to find interesting angles, interesting links, interesting stories... Um, And I mean, yesterday I wrote a piece about Emil Smith-Rowe and why his situation is quite puzzling, especially when you consider that it's a supposed loan proposal going forward for Philip Coutinho. And I've got a lot of backlash for that article because of the way I worded a tweet about it when both the picture for the article included Coutinho and the social headline in in the article, which shows up on the tweet, also included Coutinho in the name. But people, you know, are very very sensitive seemingly about this type of thing it is what it is i changed the thing because it you know it just stopped me from getting abused to be honest so it is what it is um <laughs> so says no i respect it i just want that transfer to happen so badly no i hear what you're saying man i hear what you're saying but it's just i don't i hate it it's really frustrating when people try and claim you write articles for the sake of writing articles there is always always something about my article for the reason why i wrote it be it there's a genuine link that i've referenced in all the pieces that I've put into those articles. I've never ever claimed, like the whole Pepe thing. Do you remember the Pepe thing? Surely you remember the Pepe thing. <laughs> My article about Pepe that decided to get, to get twisted by other outlets. 
That was all based off of an opinion piece talking about how we were being linked to the likes of Kulisevsky and Noah Lang. And if you're being linked to right wingers that are left footed, it's an indication that clearly Arsenal are looking to move on from the player that, that is in that position already. I just, you know, uh, <laughs> and the £25 million, which Matt Thornton says, that figure came from an article that me and Bailey did that was a discussion piece about how much we would sell him for. Pepe Gate, says Mitchell. That, again, is ridiculous. Me and Bailey do a piece talking about how much we'd sell him for. I said I'd sell him for £25 million. And then all of a sudden, you've got other outlets picking up this article claiming that we're saying that Arsenal are going to get rid of him for £25 million. It's ridiculous, but it's just the way that it changes. And then you get a load of backlash. And I am awful for this type of thing because I just, I, I bite so, so easily and I need to grow up <laughs> from biting and getting so done in about things so easily. It's just part of my nature, unfortunately. But uh, but there you go. Uh, Villa to, uh, Coutinho to Villa, says David Ornstein. Philip Coutinho has chosen to join Aston Villa on loan from Barcelona. Agreement in place between clubs with 29-year-old Brazil international creator Villa boss and ex-Liverpool uh, teammate Steven Gerrard was key. Uh, that's unsurprising. Well, that's a good move for them. Uh, I wouldn't have wanted him at Arsenal, but I think that's, a. I mean, Villa, they're of the level now where they're trying to push up the table into the top half as much as they can. Six-month loan deal. I don't know if there'll be an option uh, on that deal. It just looks like a loan for the moment. But that'll be interesting to see how he gets on at Aston Villa. Steven Gerrard there. Uh, we will play them at... Uh, at their grounds in the second half of the season. So there you go. Interesting stuff uh, for Villa and Coutinho. Uh, Villa is now Villa is now again a bigger club than Arsenal. <laughs> May I, I honestly, people who think that Villa is a bigger club than Arsenal these days is honestly ridiculous. I know they've got a European Cup and all, um, but it's just so far out. <laughs> Villa fans really got on some high horses <laughs> when the whole Buendia thing happened. And yet Buendia has not worked out. So they've had to go and get Coutinho, which is obviously very interesting. I'll be, it's a very intriguing um, uh, link. It's a very intriguing move. Let's see what happens. But as I agree with Tom, bullet dodged. I would absolutely agree with you, mate. Bullet dodged very much so. Uh, Elliot says, yes or no, Tom? Can we get both Lauvich and Gibraltar this video? Can? Yes. Of, of course we can. Will we? I'd be very, very surprised. <laughs> but of course we could. We could put the money down for both players. We have money to spend. The money's there. We're not in financial issue. We could absolutely do both, but I don't think we will. Uh, I also think we probably need to move players out first in both positions. Not in both positions because midfield we need, but striker. I think you'd have to see a Bamiyan go. I think you'd have to see um and Ketia leave as well and piano is very much a fan of, of thomas lamar i don't <laughs> I'm, I'm not in agreement with you i wouldn't want thomas lamar at the club but uh we'll have to wait and see uh rono says jovic is the best finisher of all of them better than greenwood wow that is a big big claim um <laughs> uh, Poria, who's one of our newer members today, I was genuinely annoyed when I saw people are talking about the possibility of Coutinho to Arsenal. Mediocre player, not fit for the Premier League at all. Tim says, I'm joking, of course. It's a reference from this summer when they wrestled Wendia from our hands and became a bigger club than Arsenal. Uh, <laughs> John says, I hope Arsenal signed Lamar on a five years ago. Not so much today. I do have to agree. Uh, we're going to wrap things up there because I've got to shoot off because I've got things, things to do this morning. Uh, stay well. Enjoy your Friday. You've reached the weekend. Congratulations to you. Um, but uh, it's going to be an interesting day. 4 p.m. UK time. I'll be joined by Clive from the Arsenal Vision podcast to talk through all of the transfer news and all of the transfer targets we've been linked to and to get his thoughts on what he thinks we should be doing. So I look forward to bringing you that show. Um, but yeah, have a fantastic day. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Go watch our breakdown of Gimaraish. And uh, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you guys, as it always is. And as always, up the Arsenal.